there my fellow gardeners welcome to my channel today i'm excited to show you everything you need to know about planting and growing strawberry plants whether you're a beginner or an experienced gardener this tutorial will help you grow an abundance of delicious strawberries in your own backyard if you're new here my name is jara and i teach people how to garden and grow food i post tons of tutorials showing you everything you need to know about growing all different sorts of crops and edible plants so if you want to learn more about gardening and being more self-sustainable by growing your own delicious healthy food at home make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel because i post about gardening gardening every single day. This season I decided to finally get a green stock vertical garden planter because a lot of you recommended it to me as a very good way to grow tons of strawberries especially for a small garden space. This tutorial is still applicable no matter how you're growing your strawberries whether it be in a vertical planter like this, in the ground, grow bags, containers, what have you. The technique for growing strawberries is basically all the same. I always like to start my grow guides with a discussion about cultivar selection because there's lots of different kinds of strawberries to choose from and I want to make sure you pick the best ones that will grow great in your area. There are four categories of strawberries named according to when they are harvested. The first category are June bearing strawberries. These produce one large crop in early summer. This is perfect for gardeners that grow strawberries during the summer, which would be those of you in regions with cold winters like the Northeast and Midwest. June bearing strawberries tend to be the biggest in size when compared to the other types. Next we have ever bearing strawberries. These set flowers and fruit throughout the summer and fall. Their fruit size is smaller than the June bearing strawberries, but they produce over a period of many weeks. A lot of the strawberry cultivars in this group are daylight sensitive, meaning they are triggered to flower and produce fruit when the days are very long. Hence why they produce summer through fall. Third, we have day neutral strawberries. These varieties produce fruit consistently from spring to fall and can be grown in most regions. They are not daylight sensitive, as in requiring a certain amount of light per day to produce like some of the other varieties. And lastly, we have short day strawberries. A lot of the Florida universities have developed cultivars that are considered short day, meaning they don't require a lot of daylight hours to produce, which is very beneficial to us southern gardeners that grow strawberries during the winter when the days are shorter and there is less daylight. Here's a bunch of popular cultivars. This is a pretty large list because there's been a lot of effort put into breeding more and more short day strawberry cultivars. If you have a favorite strawberry cultivar that produces a lot, please drop the name of that cultivar in the comments below. Most strawberry plants are perennial in zones four to eight and will produce Produce berries for many years as long as the plants are healthy. You can even propagate the runners to make more plants. However, those of us in zones 9 and up with very hot summers grow strawberries like a cool season annual. This is because the summer heat and high disease and pest pressure kill off the plants. So they are not perennial for us in zones 9 and up. Here in Florida, strawberries are planted in October and November and we start harvesting in December with the last harvest being around early April, just to give you an idea. Usually the strawberry farmers plant them in raised rows covered in plastic because the plastic blocks weeds and prevents the ripening berries from touching the ground where they get dirty and rot. Okay, so you know what kind of strawberries you wanna grow in your garden? Where do you purchase strawberry plants? Strawberries can be started from seed, but that's kind of hard and really is only worth it for gardeners in zones eight and below where strawberry plants are perennial. For us gardeners in zones nine and up, we have a very small window to grow strawberries. So I recommend that you purchase bare root plants, also called strawberry crowns. Check out local nurseries that carry the bare root cultivars that will perform best in your state. Which, by the way, many of the nurseries and online websites start taking strawberry bare root pre-orders in like September and they sell out quickly. Ask around Facebook garden groups, check Etsy or Amazon. Since I'm in Florida, I am growing my strawberries from bare root plants. So this tutorial will show you how to plant bare roots and tips on growing an abundance of berries. Let's discuss when you should plant strawberry bare roots or crowns. For zones four to seven, you're gonna plant strawberries in the spring as soon as your last spring frost date has passed and the ground is workable. For zones eight to 11, you're gonna plant strawberries in the fall like October and November. They grow best during the coolest parts of the year. Once you have your bare root strawberry plants, it's best to plant them immediately because the roots will dry out and then the little plant will die. So it's a good idea to have the area ready for planting, whether that be in these vertical type of containers or in the ground. Soak your bare root strawberries in water at least one hour before planting to rehydrate them. You can add a splash of fish emulsion or seaweed extract to give it a boost. While the bare roots soak, let's prepare the perfect spot to plant them. They do require full sun at least eight hours to produce a lot of berries. Find a spot in your garden with well-draining soil, free from weeds, and that has good air circulation. Berries like strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries prefer soil on the acidic side, ideally at a pH of five and a half to six and a half. You can mix in very fine pine bark mulch into the soil, which helps reduce pH or sprinkle some acidifying sulfur granules. Or you can buy soil mixes formulated for berries like Fox Farms brand, 
strawberry field soil or use an acidic loving plant soil mix like the azalea, camellia, rhododendron type soil mixes. Strawberries are heavy feeders, so soil rich in organic matter helps a lot. Make sure the soil drains well because strawberry bare roots are very susceptible to root rot. If you're in a rainy or humid area, it's a great idea to grow them in containers, grow bags, raised beds, or raised rows of soil, which is what the commercial farmers do in my area. This also helps improve air circulation, which reduces leaf diseases and picks the plants up off from the ground, making it harder for pests to get on them. Because trust me, all sorts of pests love to chew up both the plants and the berries. If you need help finding some of the supplies that I mentioned to help acidify the soil or locate some of those acid loving plant soil mixes, I'll post a link in the description below to Amazon so you can find the same ones. Since I'm planting mine in the green stock vertical garden tower, I am required to use potting mix because that's what works best with the green stock. It specifically says that in the directions. So I'm using straight potty mix, but I did mix in a lot of sulfur granules to reduce the pH, and I also threw in some extra blood meal, which is an organic source that's high in nitrogen, to give my strawberry bare root plants a good head start. You could also make your own slightly acidic soil mixture by mixing equal parts of very fine pine bark mulch, peat moss, and some compost, along with some of those sulfur granules if you can. If you're planting strawberries in rows, like in the ground, or something like that, it is recommended that you space each plant about 10 to 12 inches apart, or like one plant per square foot if you're following square foot gardening guidelines. If you're growing them in containers or a vertical tower like this, do your best to adhere to that spacing. Just eyeball it, it'll be fine. This green stock is the leaf size, so these little compartments are a little bit shorter than their full size or original which is much deeper, but this is perfect for planting strawberries. I just planted one bare root per container. Whenever I'm planting something into the garden, I always add fertilizer into the planting hole, but that's not necessary if you already pre-mixed fertilizer into your potty mix or whatever you're using to grow the strawberries in. But if you are planting straight in the ground, it's a good idea to mix in some granular fertilizer of your choice. I really like Espoma brand organic granular fertilizers, and they do have a formulation specific for berries. So if you find that that kind of a fertilizer that's the best bet just sprinkle some of that into the planting hole and just as an extra boost I do like to add something high in nitrogen so that those bare roots can start growing a lot of new leafy green leaves so I like to sprinkle in some blood meal as well because this is very high in nitrogen and will just help facilitate new leaf growth miracle Grow also has an acidifying fertilizer blend which means as you fertilize the plants and feed them it also reduces the pH it used to be called mere acid but I believe they changed the name to acid loving plant fertilizer. That's actually what I'm going to be using here since I'm growing in this green stock. This has a reservoir at the top that you fill with water and fertilizer and it will distribute water and fertilizer evenly throughout all of these layers. All right so let me show you how to plant your strawberry bare roots. First you need to identify the root system which is all of this right here and then the crown. This base right here is the strawberry crown. This is where all the leaves and their growth comes out of. You will want to plant this at soil level. Do not bury any of this crown or your entire strawberry plant will rot out and die. The planting method is the same no matter how you're growing your strawberries. Dig a little hole, add your fertilizers in there and mix it with the soil. Place your bare root in there. I like to push it up all the way on the edge of the planter here. Here's a close up view of that crown. Bury all the roots underneath the soil but do not bury any portion of this crown. All right. So we planted all the bare roots. It really only took me maybe 15 minutes to plant up this entire green stock planter. I believe this holds 46 plants. Apply a layer of mulch around the plants to retain moisture and suppress weeds. Straw, pine straw, or pine bark mulch are great options because again, they help reduce soil pH. I'm not gonna be mulching since I'm growing mine in this green stock, but if you are planting your strawberries in the ground or in containers, it's a really good idea to do so. Water your strawberry plants thoroughly after planting and then keep the soil consistently moist, but not waterlogged throughout the growing season. Berries will not form properly if there's not enough water. Remove any runners that appear during the growing season to encourage larger production. You can propagate these runners to have more plants. The most common diseases you will see is powdery mildew and fungal leaf diseases. I recommend that you spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water to clean and disinfect the leaves. The most common pests you will get when growing strawberries are aphids, spider mites, thrips, and worms. Aphids, spider mites, and thrips can be controlled with organic insecticidal soap. Spider mites can be tough sometimes, so if the soap doesn't help, try spinosad. For all kinds of worm damage, I recommend that you spray with BT, which stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, or spinosad. And I will link to where you can find all of these treatments in the description below. It takes about 21 days from flower to harvestable fruit. 
Harvest ripe strawberries when they are three fourths of the way red, not all the way red because the fully red ones won't last as long after harvested. Strawberries don't continue to ripen once picked off the plant. Frequent harvest will make the plants produce more, so stay on top of it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and that my tips will help you grow an abundant harvest of sweet strawberries at home. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more gardening tips and tricks. If you have any questions or if you'd like me to cover a specific gardening topic in my next video, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for joining me today and happy gardening.